I, st I started recording. Rubix asked off camera if we'd ever dreamed in Minecraft. And I was immediately able to say yes, because I have. And how I've had multiple dreams where I've been in block <laughs> in block form doing whatever. Um, and uh, there were sessions were like multi multiple hours long. I mean, 12 plus, I was playing all day long. And from there, I would have a dream of me caving or whatever. And what made me think to record is the fact that a long time ago, when we needed a furnace array for our area, I'm not even joking, I actually designed the thing in my sleep. I had a dream about the furnace array, I tinkered with it, and then as soon as I woke up, I got, I got up and designed what I had been dreaming about. And it worked perfectly fine. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they don't care. But the system you see in front of you is not the same system. It was a really crude, not that great. I'll put a screenshot up now if I can find it out of, of our old world. But it was it was kind of a terrible design. In fact, I'm going to go check it out. Oh, I found it. This is... I lost it. <laughs> oh, here it is. Down here. Survival Map Guardian. This was our old 1.8 world. In fact, this is going to be kind of an intelligent moment. Oh, all right, my chunks are going to freeze for a little bit while I load this. I hope that I can start recording in a second. Okay, it's, all right. So I was actually, um, when we were designing the s'more, I came back to here because this is the last time I ever actually designed an ice farm. And I just set this up in survival mode, and it was pretty straightforward. You know what? This episode is going to turn into a tour of our old world. Yeah, I'm going to do it because I did an old series on this a long time ago. But I'm going to talk about our old world today, because I think this is a pretty cool place. So, what you're seeing here are... Are you for real? Hold on. Alright. So, what you're seeing here are command block stuff, where it spawns these dungeons down here. And there was one, I believe here, yeah. It was like 37 zombie spawners along, and I died multiple times getting through that, but... Uh, but I got through it. This is the Jaffe's house. Okay, if any of you have seen my past episodes on our slime, on our sheep farm, this is the same house that we built it inside of. That's because Jaffe, who I'm sure you recognize, ha he, he's been in some of the clay episodes. He built this on this world. This was the world before Miner. I'll get to that in a second. He built this and, um, and uh, he built it again on our current world. And I don't even know where that brought me. All right. I don't even know. All right. I I'm going to start from spawn, and then I'll talk about exactly what this place is. Okay. So, the world I am on right now is... This is the world before Minerva. So this was Mr. Beast World. Started in late August? November, maybe? Of 2014. And, um... It didn't look anything like this. We had a whole spawn up here. If I can find on Instagram, I'll show it now. Um, I actually did a series touring this world a long time ago, but I didn't have a lot of subscribers at the time, so I'm sure most of you haven't seen it. And I think it was actually a decent... You know, I mean, maybe the audio and video quality wasn't as crisp as it, as it is now, but I think it was a pretty solid system, or solid recording. So here's the old iron storage. I'm not going to go too in-depth into everything, but the iron goes here, we craft it, and it comes over here. Remember, no shulker boxes at this time. And then we had a nice wooden overlay, and uh, we had some storage below for just miscellaneous stuff. And I really like this. I made this on the fly, um, so... I wouldn't really consider myself much of a builder, but little stuff like this, you know, symmetrical, cute designs, you know, I, I consider myself pretty uh, capable, if you will. I mean, nothing like the Ruby Center, but, you know, I can, I can clean stuff up. So down here, we actually had a tour of our world, and if anybody wants a world download, just ask. I'm not going to put it in the description, but eh, I think I might have a download. I'm just going to get to the key stuff. Like up here, there's a tree farm by Omango, but I'm not going to go into too much. This is Jaffe's mansion I just showed. Uh, let's go right. So over here was Azuki's base. Old, old friend of mine. And I'm showing this because I have old respect for him. Uh, when he when he first joined the world, I made him this boat saying, welcome aboard. It was a pun, and I thought it was cute. And then what he did on the world was he mined a giant hole. <laughs> 
Oh man, so uh, let's cut to, I guess, the Guardian Farm Tunnel? So this series is a little bit rushed. Uh, it's not even a series, just this video. I, I want to get through this whole thing in a reasonable amount of time, and I've already shown most of this, but I'm just going down Nostalgia Lane here. So this is the old Guardian Farm. I think Viral copied it almost entirely from a video he saw on YouTube, and we switched it up to make it our own, but this is mostly what it looks like. Chunks are going to load. Recording's going to freeze. All right. And then we ended up switching up the spawn floors. So this whole encasing, we designed this floor pattern in creative me and Suzuki once again. So it's good that I showed his base. We, um, this used to come to a floor and then there were portals in the middle. We ripped out all of it and made it a pure XP farm. In fact, what you just saw in the nether was a killing chamber I designed for the guardians. But uh, it turned out running this thing for more than a few minutes like the server. Uh, this farm, by no... It's only, I think, 50 by 50, but it easily runs at 100,000 items an hour. It's extremely fast. And the items are going to be building up right here because these elevators no longer work. So, yeah. And then there's a slime down there. We didn't light up every chunk. But this was almost a perfect perimeter. Not that it would have mattered because the AFK point was way up here. And then this was just storage, and I used some fancy indicator lights in our sorting systems, so you only needed two items in each, or one. And then this was just one of my speed crafting systems for sea lanterns. Uh, I'm going to get out of here and move on to, I guess, the tunnel system, and then I'm going to show my cave. So, one thing I actually forgot to mention was this door here. No, it doesn't work? Okay. The idea was you throw in an item and then that door would open up. If you threw it, I think it had to be the right item, I don't remember. And then it would spit it out on the other side. I actually have a video on that, linked to, link below, uh, where I compacted this a lot because his wiring was quite huge. Uh, is there a filter? No? Okay, I don't remember exactly how that worked. But let's move on quickly. So over here is actually something interesting. Before we get to my cave, I want to show this off. This is not the right place. That might have linked up. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, it's over here. I got it. All right, I'm not going to forget. Will I forget? I'm not going to forget. Over here is TDL's old mob farm. So this is what we came up with for design. Uh, this is just an old shifting floor design. So if you know anything about anything, then you should know that this does not work anymore. In fact, there might even be mobs down here just waiting. Yeah, they're never going to shift through because those broke, but all the iron golems down here were for witches and whatever else might have feather falling, and this whole thing is what we built. Pretty nice little dome-ish roof, and we only saved bones. So all of these filters here are for all the crappy witch loot and stuff, but otherwise we kept bones, and I kept a sign to keep track of it. And this made about 4,000 an hour. I mean, it wasn't insanely fast, obviously, but... You know, it did the trick. I, I quite miss using this farm. It was a really nice and easy setup, and uh, it, it was just um, it, it was nice and easy to set up, and it was uh, it was pretty cool and productive. So let's um, I, I'm gonna move on to the Nether perimeter and talk about that for a second. So this thing is our first original sea lantern roof. A lot of you guys might have seen the video of blowing up uh, a million nether rack. That, that actually got quite popular recently. And that was on our old world. And this is kind of the first time we did it in little 8x8 sections here. And this 8x8 section, if there's any in here, I'm going to set it off. All right. Is exactly why we decided to go 16x16. 16 16 and, you know, it was just kind of a learning curve. But now you can see that this is, this is the old style quarry, which actually still works. And, yeah, obviously nothing happened because it's already down there. And we were going to do this whole perimeter. Oh, uh, Jaffe, who I mentioned earlier, mined over 300,000 in here, and they ringed the outside. This, I still wonder if he used fill commands because it was just such, I don't know, it was so flat, but I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. But, yeah, this is our original quote, quote, perimeter because we never finished it. It never got finished. I'm not going to show it, but our villager area lost all of its villagers. I don't know. They just despawned. They disappeared. We lost all the villagers. Their minecarts were still there. I suspect maybe zombies got in there. I don't know. But we lost all of our best villagers, all of our book trades, all of our villagers that we had spent 
hours and hours getting, and then we just quit the world and started what later became known as Minerva. Um, this is the Minerva before the Minerva that we're playing on. This was the first world, which wasn't even named Minerva when we first played on it. And here was actually not the furnace array I was not the furnace array I was talking about, but one of our furnace arrays. Um, it was 160 furnaces here, and it is not that optimized. But yeah, some random tunnel system that I think Joel started, but yeah, we don't really talk with her anymore. But I don't I don't remember who did that. This is just kind of a wow, a lot of stuff coming up here, and I'm not even gonna show everything. So. Yeah, I think I covered it more in depth later, but here is my cave. I wonder what kind of FPS I'm going to get here, because this is, this is tough. Um, here is a combination lock of my own design. Let's break the roof here. Um, just a pretty simple, well, not simple, but not really uh, factorial-based system. Uh, let's, let's move on from there, actually. This is just a beacon room. And this is one of my first Minecraft pictures on Instagram. <laughs> just a beacon floor. Oh man, if I find if I find these things later, I'll show you. So what made me think to actually tour this world was something downstairs. This was my old base. Can you believe it? Mr. Beast had a base, Ender Pearls in the middle. Uh, behind my signs were just manual furnaces. Uh, I wasn't heavy into automation at the time, and uh, so this was just the kind of stuff I did. Like there was a lever back here. I'm gonna find it. It might be just here. Or up here. No? Hold on a second. There was an input somewhere. Oh. Oh, I don't know now. Oh! Did I rip it out completely? Well, there were pistons here that would um, move these lamps and replace them with something else. But I guess I took out all the wiring. Interesting. Okay. And then um, this system here. So, alright. <laughs> How many times have I said this system here? Anyway. Uh, this would look like this, but as soon as the combination lock you saw outside was triggered, all of this would pop up, just like so. And let me just fill this back in. And then you can see I have no armor, and then I just walk in, I had all this stuff ready and made. And that took a lot longer than I want to admit. And this is just where I kept, um, kept all my books. Remember, this was a long time before Minerva, so... The idea of commun communism, and okay, communism only works in Minecraft, by the way, but like communism and sharing everything wasn't really uh, how we played. And then you can see all the hidden stuff I had in here. I kept things to myself, the valuables, the really valuables. Remember, this was valuable. A bunch of TNT, which was apparently drained. And then this clock actually, when flipped anything but upside down, would close that up. And that was just a... Uh, Pretty simple circuit back here. <laughs> oh, this is so fun for me. Oh my god, I haven't seen any of this stuff in so long. If this isn't interesting, I'm sorry. I mean, you can just catch the next video. We're doing a nostalgia trip today. Remember, remember um, Azuma Void's old chicken farm? Well, here's one of them. This villager actually duplicated, and it's interesting that there's only one in there. Huh. Well, I just had some random thing here to open it up, and then this was record storage, bulk storage kind of stuff. Remember, again, no shulker boxes, so a cow farm with no cows in it, a really nice sugarcane farm. So I liked Etho's idea a very long time ago, still do, in fact, of having jack-o'-lanterns underneath all of the water sources, because it just gives everything this really nice glow. And then the ceiling I hear mined out all on my own, and then our world corrupted, I lost 45 minutes of progress and had to do the entire thing over again, and I loved doing it. No regrets. But uh, that's kind of the story of that. And then there's a hidden door back here of stone storage. So all of this used to go into a single uh, chest minecart, and there were about 110 of those. As you can imagine, the FPS became awful. It was just undoable. I couldn't keep it up. And... I, I just had to remove it. But this is where stone was, so you, the input's there, and I don't remember why I built that. I just found myself needing stone so much that I did something like that. And then there's also a lever back here. And then there's just a water source. Wow, I had a lot of interesting stuff. And then here's a stone deposit. Also outside that I ran right past. This is an ore deposit. I'll show where that goes. And here is a system for the sorting system below. 
Uh, wow, man, I did things very different back then. So the, the ores go into here, and they come into the ore compactor. So this is my... One of my old things, um, I've shown this on the channel, we had it built on the last world, but basically it's a zero tick where uh, pistons over there, just update and play. Oh, it looks like I froze. Yeah, it just makes a big cube of blocks. And then we decorated it with all the things that got mined here because diamonds were not rare. In fact, oh, this is where the ores go. In fact, right back here, super secret was a chest full of diamonds and this was from the command block mods that we played with, but I didn't use those, but those were all the diamonds. I'm going to get to my back door, uh, my back uh, area, a little bit later. Uh, and then this is just a mine shaft, literally. It's just a mine shaft. I'm sure some of you are wondering what the hell that was, by the way. So this is just an easy bud switch. And then, um, I don't remember even what I did. It's, it's just, it's a toggle bud switch. Yeah. So when you trigger it, it updates, it reminds itself that it's not actually being powered, and then there you go. That's that's it. And I like this system even today. I mean, I might... I, we don't have this kind of use on my Nerva for this stuff because it's so secrety. I don't know, it's just private, like, hiding stuff, which is not really stuff we do. There's really no sense in doing that kind of thing, but if you ever need a floor switch, you know, I might make videos on this stuff. I, I think that's a pretty cool idea. Huh. Look at that. <laughs> okay, there's a good story behind this. Uh, this is the Rectic pack that I used. That's, that's a fun sign. Theodore, Br I think it was Bruce, died. So Morgan told me to call him Theodore. Uh, anyway, the cacti here. I had one simple cactus farm set up back here. All my villagers died. And I ran it until this double chest was full, and I never used it all. Not even most of it. <laughs> that's it I just I that was just one double chest of cactus was good for me here is a manual melon farm uh, that used to be pumpkin and melon but then the pumpkin farm became so fast over here that I no longer needed the melon farm and so I built this also uh, when you got so the idea was you'd start at the back run all the way here and then this chest would actually drop off into an item stream and uh, fill it in that way. I have backups and backups of this world, so I'm just trashing it. And here is a leaf farm. No, it's really, uh, it really was a tree farm that we actually used. This was one of my first tree farms, and I remember building this. I mined this with haste too for hours and hours while watching Criminal Mines, and I loved it. I miss doing stuff like that. It was fun. And then I used these ch these cracked bricks because you they just added cooking normal bricks to the game. And I wanted to try that. Uh, so let's explain that with her head. We actually played on mob griefing being off. And I used to spawn withers in the leaves. And that's how I'd kill them. And that's, I don't know. We were happy with that. Didn't need mob griefing. But later on when crop farms came, we ended up needing those. So, this is my sorting system. All the items should have got shot off into here. Uh, there's actually a... A lever somewhere that dictates whether or not this can be on. You can see it's being locked. I don't recall... Oh, you know what? Yeah, I thought there was a lever somewhere, but it looks like it's just not. So yeah, the items come in here, and then they start getting sorted. And then the items come down here to the FPS killer, or as it used to be. And I just stored blocks in here. That's it. I remember I spent so much time on this, and now it's not even relevant, but... This is where I kept all my loot. Pretty, uh, actually a pretty nice system. It's nice and compact, and there's everything you need right where you need it. But let's get out of here, because we're going quick. This kitchen, I built for the entire purpose of this. I needed a dispenser for my salmon. And I'm not even joking, that's it. <laughs> that's the entire reason that's even there. And then one last thing. Uh, for the sake of the length of this video, I think I'm only going to show my cave. That's it. I'm just going to show my personal area and that furnace array I mentioned in the beginning, and then I'm done. Because there's a whole tour on the rest of this area. And hey, if anybody wants to see more of this and they don't want to go and watch the old videos, then by all means, I'll make more episodes on this. I think that's a totally fun idea because this place was pretty cool. Or maybe like 
I don't know, more tours of the old Minerva, because I didn't cover everything that well, but yeah. This was a two by tree farm. Remember, this is before I automated everything. So I would build... <laughs> Oh my god, I have some explaining to do. We, an ex-girlfriend and Viral, spent all fucking day mining this entire hole, and then we lined it with spruce wood and iron, and it was awesome. We spaced the trees so we could grow jungle and spruce, and this is how we got the wood on our server. And then we added skylights just to open it up. <laughs> And then it also happened to have a slime chunk in it. So this thing was actually, like, quite the project. We got a lot of wood from it that aren't in those chests. But I remember doing that like it was yesterday. And it was... That was a fun time, just hanging out with friends. So that's just about all of that down here. Uh, there's just a library. And then I did things like that. That shot all three of these, so you always get uh, lapis. And then a book came up from the floor. Uh, you know, part of the reason I'm showing all of this is because I know that there might be a lot of, like, non-super technical players. Like, we try to automate everything, and there are a lot of people who might not play that way. So, uh, like, this kind of base, you know, where you have a house and a bunch of little redstone shit everywhere, that might be your play style, and that's totally cool. So, um... You know, the furnace array inspired me to showcase all of this, and I kind of wanted to go back and show it off. Uh, these lights go on and off with the day. So if I do time, set, night, they do that. And then there's also some pistons down here. Yep, I expected that. Uh, this even happened when we played in survival. It just messes up sometimes. I'm not even sure why, but even if I go time, set, day... You can see that they switch out. And that's it. The wiring behind that is... <sighs> I, I never did a video on this because it's such a specific situation. And I'd also probably have a better way to do it now. But... Oh, I don't even remember how I figured this out. Like, I just had it on a delay. And then there were pistons, like, here that just update the other pistons. And... Wow, I'm actually really impressed with my own wearing. I use a redstone block piston to update those pistons to... Jeez. Like, I can honestly say that this isn't something that I'd come up with today. Huh. Oh. Huh. Alright then. Oops, not game mode 3. Let's go to... No, not even game mode 0. Game mode... Time set... Day. Alright. Oh, alright. And here's a brewing stand by CNB Minecraft. I love this design, where you can select whichever ingredient you want, say, hey, I want Splash Potion of Extended Night Vision, and you get everything you need. I mean, back before Automatic Brewers, this was the way. This is like gold currency. This is like the gold standard, because to me, this is the kind of system that will always be awesome. I mean, look at the wiring for this thing. It is so unchangeable. It's just simple redstone torches, wiring, and that's it. I mean, this thing's compact as hell. And you can't change it. I don't think it even relies on bud switches or anything. It's just unbreakable classic redstone. And if ever they break anything that involves brewing stands and where they can't be made automated, this would be... You can see there isn't even room for hoppers because when he designed this, they were far from being released in the game. And... That's it. And then you get everything you need right here to brew the potion. And that's just, I love this system. I'd make it today if automatic brewing stands weren't so perfect and automatic. But yeah, I love this stuff. And then when you can name items, I totally jumped on that. And then we just kept the potions in here. And also it got to the point where we had so many zombie villagers that I just kept them. So yeah, that's just a little trip down nostalgia. We also made it look like the nether. So yeah. And the grand finale, well, the grand finale of the house, and then I'll get outside. Actually, no, you know what, I'm showing the, the it, this is just an AFK fishery. This is cl the panda's classic design. I put fishing rods in here. Got a lot of loot. I afk this thing for 17 hours straight one day. Left it on when I went to bed. Left it on when I got home from school. Anyway, um, here is the furnace array. It's, I'm, <laughs> don't get your hopes up. This thing is so bad. 
Uh, you got the minecart that rolls over the top of the furnaces, and for some reason I had the idea of it coming over the top. I also copied Tango Tech's distribution system, where it's just the hoppers going in circles. And I even locked it here, I don't remember why. But, that's it. It's supposed to just go in circles and fill in everything, and then when it's empty it does this. It's supposed to like regulate the input for all the items. I know now that this is a very bad way to do it, but it kept it stocked with sticks. And then all the furnaces just got emptied out this way and went into this chest. And that's it. The minecart here was the input chest I added so that it apparently powers the minecart. I don't remember why that is. And, uh,. Okay, so the minecart would get filled, and then there was this long delay that gave it just enough items, and then it triggered, and then sent off. And then here's this long-ass hopper chain for all the items. Like I said, this was not perfect. And this is the system I designed in my sleep. This was... Okay. <laughs> Maybe not my best work, but still, this is just... Yeah. Anyway, that's, um, that's my old furnace array. Probably pretty anticlimactic, because I built it up so much, but... That's what you get. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, let's move on, finally, to the back door. So, here's the outside. Here's an old slime farm, or farm for mobs using slimes going in circles. And that's it. That's it. This thing was, like, actually really fast. Um, it's only, like, 13 to 20k an hour, which, pretty good. Not bad. And then we had four sections of hoppers, which each had their own sorting systems, and... A lot of pathways in between. We got Grief. There used to be a diamond armor skeleton in there. He killed him because he's a douche and doesn't have any respect for other people. Uh, the sorting system is... I'm just going to... yeah, Just a bunch of stuff down here. I spent... I, I would have said I spent hours here. I did. But AFK didn't really make sense because when it got nighttime outside, the mobs would just build up. And then eventually you wouldn't get any rates. And then here's Mango's old pumpkin farm, which is now broken. You can see they're all built up, but it's full anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, that thing used to run pretty well. Uh, we got griefed. Our villagers died. But these used to be perfect villagers in almost every way. And I traded crops and crops and crops and crops and crops. In fact, there are golden carrots right here. And that's how we got a lot of emeralds. Huh. Okay. I think I'm done talking. That's a tour of our old world and the end of today's episode i guess so sorry if you were expecting something else i don't know what i was expecting but uh that's that's gonna be it for me if you want to see more of this stuff i have a series on my channel that's probably linked below and if you want to see more and don't want to see the old videos just tell me in the comments if you want a world download also tell me in the comments i'm not going to provide it unless asked that's it for me and thanks for watching